the first of two talks again, uh, in the usual format of our seminars. First, meant to be a background introduction of a topic that should be accessible, definitely for honor students and maybe third years, uh, so that you are prepared for a more live. Uh, research seminar that we go after so that we have an, a chance of actually understanding what this is about. Uh, the one day is our newest hire. The one day is also uh, a long time uh, uh, member of UCT. He got, uh, I met him for the first time during his honors here at UCT. He did his PhD with Cesario here at UCT and then we had arranged a joint uh, postdoc between UCT and the Institute of Nuclear Theory in Seattle, uh, working uh, details with Larry McLaren, who was then uh, his contact person on the other side, where he, where Larry then extended his postdoc quite a bit. So he spent three years in Seattle. Uh, working not just with the people there, but with people from in, in other places in, in the US, uh, much more travel possible in that context, even with COVID, much more contact and interaction. The IMT, uh, maybe you would need to be told that this is a place that runs uh, regular extended workshops over ex like one topic uh, with people coming in and out for like a few weeks, uh, extended over a month or so uh, dedicated to one topic. So there is a huge flow of people through that, in, through that institution. And it's a very, very good place to be a postdoc at uh, if you want to see what is going on left and right of you. Uh, and someone who picked up topics there uh, with Larry and with other uh, collaborators and what he's going to tell us about today uh, grew out of this. It's, I'm told, a work in progress presentation. Uh, you don't have all the answers. So if you see something really, really clever, you might be able to jump in on a scientific collaboration. All right. Okay. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, okay, so yeah. yeah this was, was a, a short notice uh, kind of you know, presentation that I was asked to give, but you know. Uh, so I had the option of, uh, of uh, you know, talking to you about what I've already spoken about, uh, uh, what I'm, which was uh, the motion of of uh, uh, quarks and so forth in the, in the fragmentation region. But I'm, 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 I'm tired of that, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, about the gluon radiation. There. So what's the, what's the, the context? Okay. Um. So yeah, what 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 we're looking to do. What we, in, in general, you, you will see, uh, I guess, so suppose that you have a, a, a new colliding, a new colliding stuff. You know, in the heavy ion collider, you have a nucleus, a nucleus, right? Um, and then these are, yeah, these are the photons inside there. And, and then, um, yeah. So typically, what what you're trying to study over here is, uh, you know, the state of matter that you can form um, when when this thing collide and overlap with each other, and uh, the, the the schematic of what happens when you of the particle production over here. Let me just draw it like that. So you, you collide you collide the nuclear, and you produce stuff okay and the, the the typical production spectrum this is like some kind of uh, you know some yield of particles and here on the in this axis i plot the the rapidity of the particles again with a measure to measure along you know we're talking about the Measured along the, the axis, like a collision, right? talking about uh, kind of how 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 far they drift. Uh, the plus zero, the minus zero direction. This is the rapidity. You got uh, uh, since this one is moving that way, 
let's call it the I guess we want to call that one the target. Okay. And this nucleus over here we'll refer to as a projector. So these these are all your baryons will be will be uh, concentrated in these uh, in this in this region, right? And uh, and this this will be this will be largely massive. That's the spectrum you're going to produce. So how how do I read this? This means um, this means this uh, this collision is largely transparent. Yeah. So so uh, the nuclear and the ultra relativistic energies, you know, they, it was thought, and they, in principle, you know, uh, there's no reason to, that they shouldn't just go there, hit each other, and just stop. And then maybe uh, you get an explosion or everything going in every direction. But that's not what you see. Typically, what happens is uh, in, in this kind of picture, which means they, they pass through each other. And, um, and the picture we have is that there's a uh, in the middle here, you know, after they pass through each other, so maybe this is initial, and then the final picture. Final picture is uh, that look like that, uh, you know, and, and we imagine there's some color color flux too, you know, like you know, like the gluons are trying to hang on for dear life to each other over here, and. Uh, and then on the uh, on the cooling down and hydronizing, it, it, uh, give us what we see as a measure. So if you want to look at your nucleons and what what it says, that's only to be found at, at the rapidities kind of near the initial rapidity of the of the colliding particles. Okay. And and we call we call these uh, the fragmentation region. Okay. Region, right? Fragmentation, so I'm writing small. It's a fragmentation region. It's the target fragmentation region. It's the projector of the fragmentation region. Um, and uh, yeah, so my, the, the problem I want to study now is, uh, is like you, you know, how what what kind of temperatures and, uh, and densities of baryons do I get in in the uh, in the fragmentation region? Right? If I if I want to study, or since the central problem of QCD is uh, is understanding the so-called QCD phase diagram, so you know just like the water's phase diagram, you want to understand the different uh, states of uh, water and uh, or phases of water like under varying conditions of uh, pressures and temperatures. It's also a pressing question to figure out what the what the different phases of uh, of QCD matter uh, are like under varying conditions this time of uh, varying density and uh, and temperature. So yeah, and, and and I'm gonna put together some ideas that are known ideas of uh, firstly like saturation, right? Low saturation, um, and uh, and the compression of the nuclei to to uh, to present to you a model of, of how how uh, how we think that you, you get uh, energy densities and uh, you know and uh, uh, the baryon the number densities uh, produced in the, in the fragmentation region. So I, I hope this gives you like a context to why 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 this is interesting, right? In a heavy ion collision, this is the only this is the only place you you see where where you get the uh, High better density in addition to uh, high temperatures. So, yeah. Do you have any like, questions on that? Yeah. Uh, that picture on the bottom, when you're talking about. Please uh, speak loudly so that the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That picture on the bottom. Yeah. The two splits. Yeah. How am I to think about that physically? Is there, that's just meaning that what, the baryons are. Not coming out directly adjacent, or does that mean? What does that mean in the context of the actual geometry? Of it? it means it means uh, you have a nucleus. You have a nucleus. They 
the lower very very high energies and instead of uh, bouncing and then exploding right they're actually passing through each other oh, the better number is contained in the in the in the nuclear right? it's a if you start off let's say you go the better number is the, the number of uh, uh, nuclear arms over here, but the number of nuclear arms start off with. Right? Just, uh, I don't know if you have a, a lead, yeah, I guess it's like 200, 200, right? And then in the end, if you, if you collect these things and you measure like where the, where the better number lies, you'll find uh, close to zero for the stuff that's produced. Uh, so if this is the geometry, like they're coming this way, uh, the, the, the rapidity is also kind of a measure of the angle at which these things come out. Okay, so you, you normally have a detector dead, dead in the center, in the central region. So all the stuff that's coming out at the, at a, at the small, small angles like this way, okay, like, <laughs> right? So this, this is like some Z direction. They'll, and uh, this is your detector. Typically, you have a detector like this over here, right? And the collision takes place somewhere here. Um, yeah, this uh, this this uh, this uh, when when this angle here is uh, is small, this corresponds to also uh, uh, small rapidities. Okay, so. When this angle is large, it normally corresponds to stuff that you can uh, you know you can't even reach uh, with the with the detector this too, right? So when you measure the total baryon density, uh, baryons minus antibaryons, you get uh, for high enough collisions, you get basically what is yeah, essentially zero, right? Which tells you that uh, this nuclei actually just kind of continued on. Uh, going on, right? And the better numbers are going to be deposited uh, uh, far out. So they have net bearing, right? Yeah. There's it can be all manner of stuff in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Mostly metals. No net bearing. Could yeah. be. So you give it, yeah, in the middle, it's a, uh, yeah, you produce better on anti or something. Right. Yeah. 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 Sure. So, so the net better number. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, um, and then, uh, so, so, uh, so how we how we how we think about this uh, uh, is that um, okay? So if, if if I want to think about how this works, you know uh, what happens in this uh, fragmentation region. Let me move to a frame where I essentially sit sit in the target's rest frame, okay, and 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 uh, there will be. There, there, there will be a, a, a two important numbers that uh, like, uh, characterize uh, both uh, frames. Right? You've got, uh, you've got uh, an associated uh, saturation scale, the saturation momentum that has to do with the uh, projectile, let's say projectile, and uh, the Q set of, uh, of uh, the target, okay? And, and, uh, for my purposes today, I will say this. We we think this is the this is a, a way in which to think about uh, a complicated system such as a nuclear. Thing. So associated with uh, with this uh, uh, projectile nucleus, I suppose there's some kind of uh, you know state of a projectile. This, this is the picture I have in the back of my mind. And and uh, uh, it'll it'll be a superposition of uh, of uh, in principle it'll be a superposition of things. Like sometimes when I look at this, I will see you know state you know I have a chance of seeing a state with with a, with a bunch of quarks, you know you know plus uh, I could see a gluon, a quark, uh, anti quark, uh, you know. Uh, plus, uh, etc. Right? With, with all, all manner of, yeah, right? all, all manner of, uh, you know, uh, uh, states, uh, combinations of uh, of quarks and gluons. Okay, and same thing with the target. Right? So, and 
And the idea is that then that uh, when I'm, st I'm studying these at uh, high enough energies, uh, this state will be dominated by uh, by a, a part that's uh, full of uh, gluons, right? So that, so that it makes uh, it makes sense to think of uh, uh, the projectile as just a, a big, a big. Uh, uh, I guess it's what it is. It's a it's a state. It'll be a, a a medium that is very gluon dense. Okay, and uh, in the in the rest frame, if I'm sitting in the rest frame of the target, the uh, because I'm, the, I'm at lower affinities, uh, I can think of it as a little bit more more dilute when it comes to the number of gluons. Okay. And uh, yeah, and this this brings me to like I said, a summary. I want, I want to give you a, a, a kind of a summary of the, the work that's already been done on this. So so we try what we want to understand how these things collide. So we're gonna sit on the target rest frame and see what happens. As a, a sheet of color glass, which is a, a dense gluonic state. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask for a clarity. What are the, the saturation keys? Yeah. So so right now, oh, okay. So yeah, let's let's say this for now. Right? This is, so in the in in in, in this in this kind of uh, superposition of wave functions, I'm I'm going to take this to just be a measure. Of the of the gluon like rapidity density, okay. Like the, how how it will it, just be a thing like that. Right? So, right. So, so for my purposes here, yeah, I'll say Q cell projection is is just like the Q C D coupling, the number of colors, and then. Uh, And then the measure of uh, of the the number of gluons that I have, okay, and uh, and the same thing over there. Okay, so so what is what is known? What is known is that uh, this 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 density, this is a rapidity density uh, in, the, in the wave function, is is going to grow like uh, an exponential, okay, grow like a uh, some some number uh, far far away from you know if it, it grows some number far away from like if this y, this y is going to measure how far away I am from the from the nucleus's uh, rapidity okay so so if I'm trying to if I'm trying to study the fragmentation region okay there'll be two contributions of gluon density there'll be there'll be uh, 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 the one from the from the projectile right and if i'm evaluating uh, if i'm studying things uh, near the target right then uh, then this y this uh, this y is going to be large this uh, this uh, separation since this since since the, this rapidity is far from this right? if i want to study q set of the of the projectile at the target this is going to be very large, right? So, so, uh, so, of a projector is going to be large, okay? And then, uh, and then, uh, 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 since since uh, for the target, uh, uh, I'm not uh, I'm studying it in uh, in a region that's uh, close to its uh, uh, rapidity. Then the, uh, the the saturation scale will be will be small in comparison. Right? Okay. So, uh, and typically, what uh, what uh, how we think about this stuff is that uh, you have so, your numbers of gluons are so large that uh, you can actually think about the gluon fields uh, in a classical way. Okay, as a as a as a classical uh, uh, color fields. Okay. And and which is yeah what I, I this is the setup for me to just talk about that talk about the, how to think of uh, classical color fields so so I'm going to introduce classical Yagnil's uh, theory which is uh, how how we think about these things yeah um, yeah I'm just going to arrange this in this final work. Um, 
So, yeah, and obviously before before uh, tackling the full problem of uh, a nucleus and a nucleus, uh, it's, let's start uh, simply by, by thinking of it in the back of our minds about, uh, you know, a single color charged particle of a quark is sitting there. And then, um, and then this uh, kind of, you know, this, this uh, is what I could be called the color glass con. So this is going to be a, a dense sheet of uh, of uh, gluons because you know it's my pancake, which will be like a very high density uh, uh, gluon field. And we want to talk about the description of that. Okay, so it's my quark, my quark, and then it's my sheet of color gluons uh, uh, characterized by some, you know, the, the, it's associated with some, associated with some large uh, gluonic field. Okay, okay. so. Yeah. Um, so, 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 uh, in, in general, when you have a, 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 a field that uh, carries color, as described by uh, uh, this, uh, classical Young Mills uh, theory, and and is governed by something that looks like you know, it's, it's essentially looks like uh, the Maxwell's equation of uh, of uh, electrodynamics. Right there. Uh, and okay, uh, and then are there other questions over here? Well, well, what does it even mean that I put a commutator in that place? Uh, I think you have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and so and so the idea is that uh, this uh, the new the, the, this is a so called uh, matrix representation of. This uh, uh, angles, uh, classical angles here. This is uh, this 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 DMU over here. I, I define as a partial mu and as I G A mu, where where uh, these A mu's are actually elements of uh, uh, Lie algebra as, as you add, Okay, so this this A mu. Is actually a mu k to a, okay? Then these are elements of the, the real world, okay? Just, uh, yeah, it's just the definition, okay? And, uh, and f mu nu, and uh, f mu nu, uh, oh, there, let me just see. Let me, let me write this in a in the sense of it. Okay, this is in, it's in a small s u n, right? The real world thing. And, uh, and this field strength tensor in this case uh, is, uh, is written in this kind of way. Right? The new can be understood to be a, a commutator. Okay, so it's a minus one over i. And this G being like a, a coupling, a commutator of D mu, D mu. Okay. Um, and yeah, also if I if I in this is I don't put down both sides. Oh, sorry, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Um, mu, mu. Okay, that's that's how it looks. Okay. And then, um, if I uh, expand this out, then it uh, it looks it looks like you know, like my ordinary field strength tensor. You know, keeping in mind though that sorry, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, it looks uh, it looks like my uh, my uh, ordinary field strength tensor from the electrodynamics, and uh, you know, plus a uh, little something extra that uh, uh, that depends on whether whether these things commute or not. Okay. Um, 
and then uh, my, my this this now will be this J new then this J new will be a, a, a color color this J new uh, is again you know the sum components A yeah, that also lives in the even the real world as well okay. That's fine. Is there, so no, there's no question on that front, right? This is. Yeah. Uh, can I ask how the at this case, like, need to know how we're going to, like, what it is going to do, or is that just the. Oh, the, 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 it's the, yeah. So N is going to be just left, left in general right now. Like, you know, so in ordinary circumstances, you know, when starting QCD, N is going to be three. It's the number of colors. Yeah, okay, but uh, for, for now, I'm not, I'm not going to specify what, uh, what that is. That's okay. Um, all right, so yeah, so the, the equation itself, if you, if you can check for yourself there, like, uh, uh, you know, take a commutator, right? You, 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 one implication of this equation is that you get uh, some, some color. So not kind of, you have the uh, uh, current conservation law. Uh, so D mu, A mu. If you check, uh, right, uh, if you feel free to check and then uh, plug this in, then you, you see that this is uh, actually conserved. So, so zero. Okay. And and so yeah. So the the idea now the idea now then what we we're trying to do here. Is that we we're going to have a field, you know, a classical Young-Niels field, interacting with a, a particle that we assume carries some kind of a color charge instead of electric charge, and and then see and study the. the so first of all, you're going to hit this thing, intact by the, the the strong force. It's going to move, and then uh, also because it moves or accelerates, then it. Uh, it's going to radiate, but this time it's going to radiate the uh, gluon radiation. Okay, and we want to see if we can understand this uh, from a, a classical uh, point of view, right? and and see how far how far that gets. So, so what what I'm what I'm uh, the story I'm telling you here is in. Let me just put maybe a, a reference for you. Uh, this is yeah, this. Uh, so a reference for this is this uh, I had the let's say it's an hour, and it's uh nineteen eleven point one two. So three. Okay. So yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm recounting a, a, a the story of uh, you know of what's uh, been done already. And I'm just gonna give you a short summary of what uh, what it is that happens and uh, how how uh, we we calculate the uh, well, how they calculate the dual radiation uh, uh, from a classical point particle. And, and then which it's a good starting point. So because you can imagine eventually they're gonna build up the nucleus with the distribution of course, not uh, just a uh, single core. But this this is enough to start. Okay. Um so yeah, let's uh, let's look at the uh, 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 a quark if uh, you know well, I want to say a quark, but uh, since, since it's classical and I'm gonna write down a current for for a particle. Right, what is a let's deal with this guy first, right? So classical uh, uh, color charged uh, particle, All right? So we can write down a, a current for it uh, that looks like uh, so a new of uh, x. Uh, and 
it's I mean, if I remember correctly, the, the, the dub of uh, the other the the computer. Delta function. Okay, so yeah, so this uh, this is a uh, this is a, a current of a of a, a point particle, a point charge. Um, you know, moving along some world line described by this z of tau. Okay, so but uh. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, I won't, I won't draw that, but, but uh, I, instead of having, instead of having uh, an electric, a single electric charge associated with the particle, now uh, I think of, uh, you know, the, the particle is carrying some, some color charge, being defined by some color charge, I think they have the points in color space, right? So this Q of tau, this Q of tau is, uh, Written as uh, been written in the following way. All right, so you pull out like some scalar part, and then this is, and this is also like an element of SUM. Okay. Um, and it, uh, if we if you take uh, some 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 steps, but if you if you see what the consequences are of this current charge, uh, sorry, of this uh, current conservation law uh, acting on uh, on uh, a current of. Uh, uh, the point particle, right? Uh, you know, you you will find that it actually it, it, it describes a precession of this uh, of this color charge. Again, so you'll find uh, the Q or the tau. You know. Uh, Changes as IG commutator with a U nu mu times a Q. Okay. I guess at some whatever point the tau or, or X. So wherever you stick it. Okay. And and if you so that's that's true. that's one way of doing things, okay? Um, and maybe let me let me let me step back. Let's like like rewind a little bit and uh, and talk about this uh, about a, a, a second form of this. So I wrote this I wrote this in uh, in matrix notation. Right? All of these are matrices, right? Um, but then uh, we know because these these are, uh, are elements of uh, Lie algebra, you, you can you can always write them as a uh, as like some kind of scalars, several coefficients times the matrix, right? So uh, all all these equations should be writable in terms of just uh, of just these components, okay? Um, and uh, what what you have then in that case is uh, stuff like this. Um, so in in uh, in 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 component form, in component form, you you get the uh, D Q A. Tau, you know, will be some. This looks like. Uh, let me write it on. It will be like uh, some. This G U U A. Will be the ABC, okay? 
Yeah, and in, in any case, in any case, uh, if I if I take a look at this, it, it looks it looks very reminiscent of uh, quantum mechanics, like uh, like a Heisenberg equation of motion, right? Um, and I already know like uh, what the solutions to uh, to that look like. So what 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 you find is that uh, you 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 Q right your Q at the at some at some point uh, x this uh, this uh, color change will will process and and this procession is uh, will be given by some kind of uh, you know it's, it's not a time evolution operator now it's how we can operate it or or uh, or part order exponential where where u of x u of x in, instead of uh, being a, a time ordering uh, you know since our equation was in terms of tau instead of time ordering this will be uh, a part order exponential um, All right, so so yeah, that's uh, the first thing you find, and then uh, uh, the second easy thing to check is uh, that is that d of q squared, right? So so that's like the if this is like uh, the evolution of like the components, right? So you find that d of q squared by d tau is actually zero, right? So the, the kind of uh, absolute value of the of the color charge is, uh, is unchanged by, uh, by uh, any kind of uh, interaction with the field. Okay. So okay, so that's it. Uh, that's that's not it, I guess, for the for the uh, for the point particle. In, in addition to processing and so forth, uh, I must know how uh, how it's capable. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look again. At, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, move on a little bit. Yeah, you have a question. Oh, hey, okay. just interpreting the the Heisenberg equation of motion for our sort of color mm -hmm. description. Mm -hmm. So, would the idea idea there be that over time the uh, color, it's called the color function that parameterizes our color, mm -hmm. is going to interact with the Field, the yeah. field in the back. Yeah. Okay, so it has to interact with the field to actually do some sort of relation. Yeah. Yeah, and so then it can never actually change the magnitude. It doesn't change the magnitude. So yeah. Just for the fiddles with orientation, as you should know from other examples. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to have a field to actually change. You need a field. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, another thing that is normally coupled with this is uh, uh, the kind of uh, okay. So we, in order to avoid confusion, because I'm I'm, I'm confusing myself a little bit. Let's let's see the, the following, right? So have, have you? When when you write down what you like to sell us as a non-Euclidean cousin of the Maxwell equations, yeah. Um, this is usually read as uh, given the job is calculated here. Yeah. You calculate here. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Now you specify the current in these sources as a moving color charge. Yeah. And you require current information. And as a consequence, you derive an equation for Q, which basically parameterizes the color charge. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just the opposite of what I stated initially as a as a sort of a trivial statement? Mm -hmm. Given the sources calculated fields, isn't that a sort of a back reaction of the background field of the charge? Mm -hmm. Because it imposes a condition the charge has to satisfy and mm -hmm. in your evolution operator or mm -hmm. depends on background. Mm -hmm. so isn't the yeah. Philosophy reverse. Yeah, this is this is yeah, this is a little bit confusing for me as well when I'm thinking about that. Yeah. 
So on the green, but yeah, I, I, I feel like yeah. Well, it is the question that no one's read about uh, about the back reaction. You cannot in electrodynamics you can very easily pretend I put a strong field there and I put good. a test strong in, and it's the field. That, uh, it's you can either say it's the it's the field that moves the test charge mm -hmm. and I ignore the back reaction, or I can otherwise say I have. My charge moving here now, just looking at the field. Yeah, you need to couple wires. Yeah, yeah. 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 You need to couple wires to get yeah. an electron yeah. 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 But here it, it talks to the even there, right? You, yeah. you cannot you cannot cut this apart at all. Yeah. So, so so it's already made then. Okay. Because yeah, it's when I think of it like that, it becomes easy. Okay, so. <laughs> So, so you want to, so, uh, <laughs> so, so you want to, you can still say I prescribe one and see how the other reacts. Mm. Right? That you can still do, but the freedom in prescribing what J does is reduced. You can specify J only at a given time, let's say, given proper time power. And then the at later times, it's prescribed. But in electric dynamics, you ought to say, I put a charge into the system. And I'm not going to fiddle with the amount of charge I just let it move. Right? I prescribe a trajectory that gives me my cousin. So, so it's not that different. But you have, you have a more complicated. So system of equation it, it, it's not it's not perfectly simple. Thank you. Okay, so 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 sorry, sorry. So so I, I just I just want to because I didn't, I didn't mention like how, how you can write uh, this in the kind of component form and uh, the kind of vector form. Um yeah, re recalling that the uh, F mu nil is a uh, matrix uh, defined by that. Um I, I can also write uh, this this equation uh, uh, this uh, the angles equation as uh, uh, it then becomes uh, the D mu F uh, mu. You know, I'm just going to collect all the A's into the, you know, the, this kind of vector plus uh, G. And you. So 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 yeah. This is uh, I, I, I can uh, yeah. I can also if I'm thinking of this in terms of this component. So I put a vector there to sum up uh, to collect together all the color indices, right? The, the little vector, the vector, the vector of some sort, and. Uh, and by, by this, uh, you know, I mean, by this and that, I mean, it's a, by mu cross that, because it's not three dimensional, it's just a F, A, B, C. Suppose I'm looking for the eighth component of it, the A, B, C, a, a mu of A, F, mu, mu, uh, color in this. So this, this is what I mean by the, by the kind of cross product. If I, if I write it out uh, component by component, yeah. yeah. Um, so okay, so uh, you can you can write it down the angles of equations that form, and then uh, once more, once more, you have um, you you have, you have uh, a kind of generalized uh, Lorentz force law, right? For this thing. So if I wanted to find out the change in momentum of the thing by just watch your field. Um, then then I get uh, this is given by the charge plotted with F mu nu, you know. Um you, you know, get, we're, we're, 
so, so that's your uh, uh, that's uh, going to be the, the what what tells me what tells me uh, how uh, what momentum or what force is, uh, is experienced with the particle that it moves through a field, yeah, in addition to the rotation. Okay, so yeah, so that's it for that. And then the next piece, uh, the next piece one talks about is is the 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 sheet. So how 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 do I describe the sheet? Okay. On the, the big nucleus you know, that is uh, that is carrying all this uh, that is carrying this large field. Right. Um, all right. So next. Or, uh, or ultra uh, relative uh, nucleus. Okay. okay, so we, yeah, uh, I, I already did the, the job of telling you this, uh, this, uh, this nucleus is the best thought of as a, just a, a dense gluonic medium. Yes. Um, and how how we think of it, you know, due to due to time dilation uh, and so forth, is that uh, this this these this fields are, are sourced by some kind of uh, static, at least in the transmit direction, is the static uh, color sources. Okay. So so let me let me just uh, write it off a little bit. So the sheet the sheet will have a. Uh, We'll have a field. So sorry, we'll have a current that uh, described in the following way. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Okay, so so yeah, I've got deal with, uh, with a number of things, uh, you know, and uh, so the idea we hear, the idea we hear is that uh, if, I, if I draw, uh, draw my kind of a space time diagram, you know, and uh, and here you have the z direction. Um, this is a this is a right moving uh, this is a right moving uh, uh, sheet. So I probably should have yeah. So in your in your mind, this should be like, like this. It should be it should be like that. Okay. So okay, this is your quark here, and this thing is, 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 is I, I want my for my equation to make sense. All my sheet uh, to be moving uh, to to the right. Okay. Um, and I can introduce so called the uh, uh, light cone coordinates. Right. Um, which uh, which I, I, I define as uh, you know, x, x plus is zero plus uh, z over two. And uh, this is uh, zero minus z over two. Okay. So yeah, and so if I if I read this equation, this just says uh, in in these kind of coordinates, this uh, this current this current uh, will will only have or will have a, a very enhanced uh, a plus component, which uh, in this kind in this language is it's just a way of uh, it's just what happens to a vector when you uh, boost it very to a very high. Uh, the rapidities in the plus z direction, okay, and this is just capturing that information. So it will look like uh, it only has a plus component. Um, this delta function, right, that's, that's, that's all one of the main. Uh, I hope it like, looks like a delta. This delta function uh, just tells me I, I am sitting. The sheet is sitting right here, so it's uh, it's, it's moving. Uh, at uh, essentially uh, the speed of light, 
And the second layer, it tells me that uh, the sheet is is very thin, you know, which is what I expect from uh, the Lorentz contraction of my nucleus. Okay? Um, but uh, but over the the the, the time scales that uh, that uh, the quark will be observing, right, as uh, as this thing passes through, um, the the sheet will be right, the sheet will be so so time dilated that uh, that all you'll observe is a static color chart. There's no time dependent, right? And I kept an eye over here, and that uh, there's no x plus dependence of uh, of the of this uh, of this sheet. Okay. There's a, there's like a question about that. You, know, like, uh, you might want some clarification of the, in the description of the sheet. Or... Yeah. So this is like the pancake. It's the pancake, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. And I was going to ask why there's an index on your density, but you've also got. So these are now yeah. uh, coefficients yeah. to For the matrices. To your color space yeah um, yeah okay. okay so okay good good and so uh yeah you can uh yeah so so uh, of course this uh, this uh, big j as well has a uh, right in the situation where when there's uh, nothing else other than that uh, the big sheet there there's a uh, is an associated uh, color field with this you know so uh, this will be is also uh, to be new, 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 maybe, yeah. And let's say I'm, I'm gonna put a, I'm, I'm gonna put a zero there just to emphasize that I'm talking about, uh, about the uh, fields and so forth associated with, uh, with, with this time. Yeah. Um, so the, the last the last bit last bit I want to say about the, in, in this paper then is that uh, I want you to recall I want you to recall all the all the words I said about uh, about the, the, the how to think about the sizes the size of the of the fields in, associated with the with the target and the field associated with the projectile, right? So we said the target has very large fields and the projectile has a, is, you know, small or weak, weak field. Okay, so what uh, what is done then in this uh, in this uh, paper uh, that I said about, about is that you, you then study if you study like the combined system of uh, you know some big angle, which you will write as a uh, you know the a of the of the of the sheet you know or, 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 or the background plus some small perturbation uh, which I'm gonna associate with uh, with the uh, uh, with the, the field associated with the with the small curvature okay and and then if yeah, if we for the combined field, the one that runs through the, the young girls equations again, right? But then uh, keeps only keeps only the terms that are that, that are a uh, 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 order one in the uh, in, in the in this uh, small field over here and throws away like all all a squared, right? What uh, what this gives you is a uh, uh, is an equation that that matter, yeah the only equation that ends up mattering is, is the is the equation for the for the actual the, the transverse uh, parts of this of this small field right and and then I'm gonna write that it will be like a small
So it, it, winds, it winds up being a, a field on this form there where, where, um, where this uh, delta J and then is the current associated with, uh, with the small uh, particle. Yeah. And yeah, this this is then this is then used. So this this uh, small field then is then used and so looked at. So so you start off. So what you have in your in your mind, yeah, when you're studying this, is like you have a you start off with some some big you know field. Um, well, I guess not field. It's a nucleus, say. Plus uh, a quark with uh, some initial momentum, right? And then uh, it goes to something that's associated with the, with the nucleus that was just hit. And then the quark uh, gets a momentum kick and, and produces some uh, some glow, okay? And um, and so now now one uh, uses this. This uh, it's a small uh, field to, to study uh, what the radiation is of this. And I'm just going to state to you the, the result that they get. Yeah. So, yeah, so the result is that uh, you get a, a gluon radiation spectrum that, that looks like this. There will be some some constants over here which are all the red down. In integral over and uh, and then there'll be two things that the uh, one is called the, the M, the bulk amplitude, and then the other one they call the branch trial amplitude. Um, so, yeah, what, what so what, what this looks like is M bulk. Um, and bulk uh, is a is a function that looks like this h i and the k k obviously yeah, k obviously is the momentum associated with the with the gluon okay and uh, and Okay. Um, uh, Rems is uh, given by I is given by uh, the ki over kt squared plus two to the minus squared. Okay. Yeah. So and then and then uh, this this uh, this is a Fourier transform of uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, correlated right. This is, so so S tilde is a is a Fourier transform of uh, of this known uh, dipole correlated transform. Uh, And you have a over, over color again. Okay. So yeah. So if I if, if I study this, uh, you know, what do I see? Okay. So this is all of that is to get up to this point. See what right. So we we have uh, proceeding in this classical way. 
we have an expression for what uh, what the glow aggregation would look like in terms of uh, something that involves uh, the background field, the, each sentence via this this uh, this use is uh, like the Wilson line. Right. So exponential of this exponent. classical field of the big one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so we have something about uh, that tells us about the, the the big field, the background field, and then uh, and then stuff that tells us. So we see a term here that actually. Oh, sorry, I haven't defined things. Okay, so this is C. Is uh, is defined as uh, this fraction of the the p minus p minus over p. Minus over minus, okay, right? Um, yeah, so you see that uh, there's a there's a, a this m bulk is the of, of these things is the only one that uh, exclusively talks to this guy. This is okay, and and then you get the uh, uh, Bram Stalin part. Uh, because this this actually looks if you look at this uh, and I don't have the time now but uh, this this looks just like uh, the, the, the what you get in uh, electrodynamics uh, you know for um, a classical whatever, you know, charged electromagnetically charged particle against a kick you get you get the term that actually looks like uh, like this when, when you're trying to study it's a radiation far away. Sorry, the, 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 the radiation. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I want to highlight some some problems with, with this. So the trouble the, the trouble we get at the, with, the, with this formula as as yeah. Hey. Why? I, I guess it's it's three things. Mm -hmm. Why are they two contributions? Uh, the bulk. I mean, what is it? The the bulk is normally referring to some kind of volume. So what is that bulk referring to? I, I, I don't I don't know why they call it the bulk. The bulk. So so the, the the contributions are to be understood in this way. Okay. So there there is. There's the ordinary in, in uh, electrodynamics. There's the ordinary branch trolling you get just from uh, hitting a thing. Right? Uh, if, if you if you scatter very hard on this thing, uh, it, it's, it'll, it'll radiate something. In the, in the normal electrodynamics, right? And then uh, in because this is a uh, is a uh, this is QCD or not QCD proper, but this is a uh, you know the fields themselves carry color charge. There will there will be a second contribution there that comes from uh, you know the kind of uh, shaking of the of the fields themselves and then the radiator the stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, so so that's that's why these uh, these are uh, uh, this is why we separate this contribution. Yeah, um, and so. Yeah, I, I, I want to yeah, say something before, before I, I, I close it. So for, if I do a perturbative calculation in QCD or in QED, and I calculate the brown strumming, this kind of controlling distribution, what I will find is that the, the at the large the large kt behavior of this thing the, the asymptotic behavior goes like one over kt uh, this uh, kt being the perpendicular uh, or the transverse momentum of, of the gluon goes like one over kt to the fourth okay and and then if i uh, look look at this you'll see that it, it goes it goes like one over kt squared and then uh, even at large uh, 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 KTs was like uh, one of our KT squared still. Yeah. Um, whereas with, uh, with what I know from uh, perturbative um, QCD or perturbative QED, these things tend to go off first like one of our KT squared for moderate KT 
And then when KT is large, it will fall off like one over KT to the four. Okay. Which uh, makes this, even though it's, a, it's an impressive feat of uh, getting a classical formula that uh, contains the fields, the background fields of all orders, okay, it, it has the incorrect uh, high KT behavior. Okay, so, so it makes it problematic as a, as a tool that's going to be used uh, in any kind of phenomenology. Yeah. Um, I, I will discuss this further and probably better uh, like next week what, what, what the trouble is with this and, and how one might go about uh, 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 fixing uh, uh, this which, what looks like a, a very nice uh, achievement there to, to make it uh, at least have the right uh, high KTS behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's a good stopping point for me. <laughs> we have survivors. <laughs> <laughs> but you went over yeah yeah i mean i feel like i feel like uh... all right uh, do the survivors have questions i mean i worked some already yeah i feel like it's all yeah we go like a little better if uh, we like interact a little more um, yeah so there is you... no naive question i mean there was probably quite a pile of new ideas that you have to see so Ask anything. He cannot flip back his slides, of course. He <laughs> can draw a new picture. <laughs> you look like you were about to go off. Come yeah, yeah. In that, in that equation with the with the with the second second uh, yeah second uh, the these are uh, these are uh, these are uh, e minus in the in the on the board. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just the uh, uh, inverse of the uh, inverse. So it's like it's like an integral. It's a great function. Uh, it's a great function in the end because it's one dimensional. That actually means it's a it's an integral along one direction. Yeah, the, yeah. Typically, folks just just do this. Just you know. Yeah, in the end, if you want to develop it explicitly. This can increase function to calculate the uh, inverse of the um, Yeah, in, in any case, uh, this is this was background. This is not this is not the really what, what I, I want to talk about. <laughs> you know? But uh, I, I, I I want to tell you about uh, this final product and. Yeah, and why, you know, why, why it has a uh, like problem. And this is this uh, high KT uh, behavior. So, so yeah. Okay, so then now we have a, the question would then be uh, what goes wrong? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so, yeah, so the, what 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 you'll see is that by like even 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 in the even in the QED case, okay. So if I if I uh, if I draw if I do branch scaling from like calculating with classical just electromagnetic fields, I, I can I can work something out that looks something like this. And then I can also draw three level Feynman diagrams, right? Of the blue one, the radiating comment. And you find that even there, like to, to these things, you can get to be equal. But uh, one of the assumptions that goes into it is that uh, this K is small, like the, the, the energy of the radiating the particle is small. Okay. So that's what you find. Right? If you calculate in this uh, kind of classical way, uh, you, you uh, lose. You know, it's it, okay. It's not valid for for the case where where the the, the energy that's carried away by the blue one carried away by the blue one really matters. Uh, yeah, so that's what it is. So it's a uh, it's a recoil, right? So 
this 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 is the the k that the Guam parallel a. This is p prime. So when uh, when when this thing is uh, small, you'll see that uh, this actually agrees uh, almost exactly with the uh, this kind of uh, uh, this QED like uh, the French one. And yeah, I'll just talk about how to fix that in the next presentation. Yeah, so, so, all right. Oh, yeah. So, I think that's what's <laughs> I mean, it smells like a back reaction problem question in yeah. some ways, yeah. uh, which is something that you will find if you look at classical dynamics. Even there, it is a largely unsolved problem in the classical. And you'd think quantum electrodynamics would offer some insight, but going back from there to the classical problem would also not. Just to give you a warning that this, these are things that might sound trivial, but they have not been solved for. I don't know how long the electrodynamics was around, classical electrodynamics. <laughs> a long time. Right. All right, so let's say thank, thanks again and thank you guys for being here. I'm <laughs> <very nice. laughs> right. The recording is still on. I was promised they would actually cut off after this. <laughs> Uh, when they edit this before they put it. They edit this? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>